back to my channel. It's your girl Shira, aka the Melon Nostalgic Runner. And we are back again for another episode or review of The Real Housewives of Potomac. This is season nine, it's episode four, and it's called Bunk Beds and Budding Heads. And this was a, another good, cute episode. Potomac is really turned around. Wait, hello. Sorry, can you hear me? I probably messed that up, but we're going to keep it going. We're going to keep it all in here. Um, but like, yeah, I feel like Potomac's really turning things around. Um, wow. That's all I'm going to say. Um, anyway, so the episode continues where we left off where Mia and Karen are in the car on their way to um, the place that the ladies are all staying at for... Um, Lake Norman. And if you're wondering why I'm looking down, I'm literally paying my cat. Just nine times out of ten, if I'm like not in frame, it's because the cat's right there. And um, Whisper's been in love with me ever since I've gotten home. Um, and just been such a cute, 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 cute baby. Anyway, so, um, yeah, they're talking, and then this is where we get the, um, I think, I'm not sure if I mentioned it in the previews, but I did watch, the, because lately the Housewives have been coming out with previews ahead of time, and so I think I did mention that Mia and Karen were going to be in the car, and Mia's still kind of shading Karen because she's not owning up to um, what's going on with her, actually, and... I will say this, Karen does continue to be a disappointment when it comes to that. But I do understand why. Because if it was just the one thing that she was charged with on the DUI, and if it wasn't like her second one, um, actually, I think this it's been her second one, but I don't think they were close enough where it's a problem. I don't know. I don't know the laws in that area, in the DMV. So I don't know if that's necessarily true or not. But like, I get why Karen from like a legal standpoint is not owning up to it. Because she's not, if she owns up to it completely everything she did, she's going to sit down. And for those who know, I mean, she's going to go to jail. Um, and, um, and it might be some time time. For all the things that she's charged with. Um, or potentially everything they put on her. So, yeah. Legally, I wouldn't be owning up to... I mean, I don't know. You shouldn't be owning up to it. But at the same time, it doesn't look good from core public opinion. Because we, we know that she did that. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it was one of those things like... Maybe she should have maybe sat the season out, but how is she going to sit the season out if she needs that money for legal fees and everything else? And also, too, she's literally one of the faces of the show. So they're going to want her to, you know, address it. And but Karen just continues to deflect. And that and that is mainly the theme so far this season is Karen will continue to deflect. Um, but there's other things going on as well. So that, that, that isn't the difference too. So, but Karen's just, but Mia's just like, okay, I just really wish she would just admit it. And it's like Mia, we, I just explained why she's not going to. Um, <laughs> and then the subject of, um, Karen filling away that Jacqueline said that, um, Karen called her drunk. And again, I get why Karen's upset because... She has a case that she's fighting and the last thing that she wants is we can't be talking about her constantly drinking if she's trying to fight a case about her drinking. So I get it from a legal standpoint. Ethically, because she's probably guilty of these things, that's not cool, it's not okay, but those are two different things and court of public opinion, still not a good look, but... Anyway, because honestly, at the end day, what Jacqueline said, it really wasn't that big of a deal. But considering that, what I just mentioned, it can come off that way. So anyway, so then from there, Jacqueline's talking in the car with um, Giselle and Wendy and kind of mentioning, you know, how Karen's mad at her. 
And then Giselle also mentions like, look, I'm not really happy with Karen right now either. We got some things to talk about. And um, Wendy's like, so can you at least talk to her maybe today versus tomorrow? Because to the next day is Wendy's birthday. So she's like, I just really want my birthday to be drama free if possible. So can you just talk it out, you know, sometime this evening? And Giselle's like, yeah, I'll do that. I'm going to try my best not to do mess up your birthday. Um, so that, that, that was that on that. And then in the other car, um, Kiana, um, Jazzy and Ashley, we learn more about Kiana and Greg's relationship that he actually works at a mental health facility type situation. He, I don't know if he's the owner of this thing that he does. I, I forgot what it was, but like she helps out with that. I think it is his own business and she helps out with that. And she also shares that her own business, which we know she owns like a spa situation because it's been established and she's had it for a while. It runs itself. She's like, I don't really need to be, I don't really do much over there at this point because it runs itself. It's a well-oiled machine and they're doing, very, and she's doing very well for herself with that. So now she's, you know, helping out her man, her man, her man at his job. And um, it does make me think that relationship's a pretty solid relationship because of the work that he does. And I can see why she was attracted to him. But she is apprehensive because of dealing with a man who's been married before. It is a little interesting. And yeah, I can see how that could be interesting. And then um, Mia, back in the car with Mia and Karen, Mia states that she's kind of just like bored with, um, Stacy and we don't, she doesn't find her interesting and she's not the only one that said it, but she wouldn't say who else said it. And, um, in my head, I'm thinking, girl, you're just being messy. Like you're mad that she's not messy. And also too, she's new. And also, I feel like Stacey carries herself with a lot of class and demure. I I feel like she just, I feel like Mia just did that, just do that. Because Mia, this season, I've noticed, because now she thinks she's like the, the it girl, which she kind of is, unfortunately. But at the same time, like, because that, the first chair is getting to her head from the reunion. And we knew that was going to happen. We knew it. Because this is not the first time. She also decides what the room situation was a little funny once when we get to that. And then also how she keeps viewing the newer ladies. And it's like, girl, you used to be new too. You're not like day one of the show. It's only Giselle, Karen, and Ashley that are the day one. So I really wish you would just stop that. But anyway. So next we see that um, they all arrive and Mia's reminiscing about Lake Norman as they're getting to the places they're staying at. And we find out that Mia and Ink um, have a lot of history at Lake Norman and they moved there together right after high school and also moved over in that area because to help Ink pursue his radio career in a different market. And so it is interesting that Ink has kind of always been in her life and it's really messy and very confusing in the words of Giselle. Yeah, because Giselle even calls out, too, when they were talking about way later on the episode. Giselle's like, I'm sure the kids are confused because I'm confused. And I'm like, as am I. <laughs> it is a land of confusion, but that is Mia in a nutshell. So then Mia gets the rooms, has the room set up and everything. And also, too, the food was there. They had the food there once they got there. And champagne and greeted with honor so she did that when it came to that which is rare because normally the Potomac girls be missing the boat when it comes to Shakuri board and whatnot but anyway so then Giselle and Karen they both each have their own room but they have to share the bathroom because it's a connecting bathroom and they're all like oh she just set us up yes yeah, she did <laughs> she definitely did she definitely did and then um, Jazzy has her own room. Um, Ashley has like one of the best rooms in the house. And we saw Jacqueline's jealousy come right out of there because Ashley has the best room in the house. And Jacqueline the whole entire time is like, I better not be in the same room as Mia. 
Spoiler alert. She was in the same room as Mia. Yeah, Mia thought that needed to happen that way. I'm like, Mia, you are shady. Shady. The old, a little bit of that old Mia never left when it comes to that. I think she wants Jacqueline to stay under her. That was what we, that was what was talked about two seasons ago. That there's just this thing about Mia, how she likes Jacqueline to stay under her. But yet, in this episode, you find out Jacqueline is not helping herself out at all when it comes to this. Because, yeah, she's not. She It's very interesting, but we'll get to that. So then in the room, so the other room situation is... <sighs> Mia has Kiana and Stacy staying in the room with bug beds. Kiana is very upset. She's like, wait, what the hell? And she's like, oh, I, I understand how, um, you know, Mia thinks of me, thinks a lot. And Mia's like, yeah, I, you know, it's their boot camp. And again, it's alluding to them because they're new. Mia did this last season, though, with um, Naneka, too. So we're not surprised. She she does this. Um, but then, okay. Um, Stacy isn't there yet, by the way. I forgot to mention. Stacy, she drove, rode by herself, so she still isn't there yet. And um, from there, we end up going to Wendy's room. And Wendy's room is beautiful and decorated with a happy 40th birthday. Like, Mia pull all stops for that. And Mia, I'm going to give you a little bit of something. Because you know I've always been sighing you because I don't think you've ever really apologized to... Um, Wendy for what you did two seasons ago but this is a very very good start <laughs> you know if Olive Branch looks like that that my friend you're on point with um <laughs> throw me a nice beautiful celebration celebrating me and decorating my room and making sure I have one of the best rooms in the place yes ma'am you know, sometimes actions is better than words. There you go. Anyway, and I think I think even Wendy agreed with it too. She's like, we've had to check her past, but to see that she just did all this, okay. Okay. I was like, you're right. Anyway, then, um, oh, Karen this whole entire time is being such a hater though. She's like, Wendy's getting all this great treatment for her birthdays, but yet every single year that... This cast celebrates, or this these group of ladies celebrate me and my birthdays, it turns to garbage. It's like, this last birthday, the, the, her, her birthday that we just had in the season premiere wasn't garbage. I mean, Ashley made it trashy because of her shady, or her shady, um, her shady gift, but that's about it. It didn't seem bad to me, but it wasn't great either because it was Giselle putting on the party and we know... Giselle should not throw a party. Um, <laughs> but anyway, so then from there, um, oh, the other thing I forgot to mention um, that happened was in the car ride, it was alluded in more than one way that apparently Jazzy joked with the ladies about being Mia's new sidekick because of the fact that Jacqueline still is kind of acting that way. She's still so far connected to Mia and she's not really branching out outside of her much, still. And um, so it comes up at the table as they're eating lunch. And um, so Jazzy and Jacqueline start going back and forth and not in a shady bad way, but just like very, very petty. And Jazzy's like, First of all, I was joking because I just think I'll be a better sidekick than you. <laughs> but she was joking. But she kind of wasn't. She was being shady. It was definitely being shady. But then as this argument back and forth is happening, all the ladies are kind of looking at Jacqueline like she's weird because it is weird. It definitely does seem like Jacqueline has this weird like obsession kind of thing with Mia. And at the beginning, when Mia said all this two seasons ago, we thought Mia was joking and we didn't take her seriously. But just some of the, this, 
all throughout the episode, it is like Easter egged that there's like a one upsmanship that I feel like Jacqueline does when it comes to her friendship with Mia and she wants to be the number one friend, which I don't understand why do you need to be someone's number one friend? You know, people can have friends. Friends is a plural. You know, you don't have to be the one friend unless there's something else going on, which since that's been alluded, we don't know. But anyway, so we also find out um, Giselle is not staying the whole entire night for the first night. She's actually leaving to um, help her kids get ready for graduation. And then she's coming right back the next day. Um, so that, so we do find that out also at the table. Um, what else? Uh, oh, Jacqueline and Karen get go start going back, start going at it. And it's in relation to like how Karen just feels a way that Jacqueline brought up her drinking um, when she was calling, um, when Jacqueline was calling her. And she was just like, you call me to console me. And yet you're now throwing me under the bus. That's what Karen's saying. And she's kind of putting 20 on 10. Well, she's not kind of. She's putting 20 on 10 to the point where the ladies are like, girl, you're kind of being a mean girl. And again, this is another way of Aaron deflect, I'm not Aaron, but Karen deflecting. She's still deflecting for sure. And then Stacy does arrive. Uh, well, I forgot, Stacy arrived around this time too. And so she's just kind of like, oh, no, Stacy didn't arrive yet. She did not arrive yet. But that's the conclusion when it comes to that is that Karen's deflecting. And then she's being so mean that Jacqueline's like, starts to cry. She's like, I don't, if you care, I don't care if you cry or not. But did y'all see any tears come out of Jacqueline's eyes? I didn't. Karen might not be all the way wrong when it comes to the Jacqueline situation, but Karen definitely still is still deflecting. And I never thought going into season nine, I would like Giselle more than Karen at this moment. But that's how I feel right now. Isn't that wild? I never thought the tables would turn. And the tables definitely have turned. Just because the way Karen is showing out, it's to stop us from talking about what's really going on with her. And we know it and it's very obvious and clear as day and it's making her not so likable. So, yeah. Um, after that, yeah, then um, Stacey does show up. And immediately she's shown to the rooms and then she sees um, that she has bunk beds. But to everyone's surprise, she loves this. Cause she's never been able to sleep in the bunk bed. She's like, oh my gosh, I'm so happy bunk beds. And so her joy actually helps Kiana actually like it too. And so they're like, okay, we're gonna do this. We're on board. And the other thing they did was they pushed the bunk, be bunk beds together. So they're two queen size bunk beds basically cause they pushed them together. Only thing is hopefully one-on-one -on -one, they don't really realize. I, I think hopefully they not only just push it together. I'm hoping they did other things as well to secure it because yeah, falling out of a bunk bed, especially in adult life, you don't want that. You do not want that. I fell out of a bunk bed, I think when I was like 19 or 20, um, I was at a frat party. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, and um, I fell out of a bunk bed um, it was clearly wasn't my bunk bed, um, but yeah, that didn't feel good. <laughs> I was very sore the next day and it was because I fell off a bunk bed, not because of something else you would have thought it would have been. But yeah, anyway, it just kind of reminded me of that. I'm like, hmm. anyway, um, so then Stacy and Karen go outside to talk briefly and, um, Oh, so besides the bunk bed situation, Jazzy and Jacqueline, they talk a little bit more about what was said. And I think they cleared the air. And then Stacy and Kiana, they clear the air about things too. And it seems like they're going to be really cool and really good friends. And I just love how the, the newbies are all kind of trying to unite as a crew. Because honestly, if they, 
I feel like they've all gotten the memo that y'all need to build some friendships of some sort, or at least a relationship or representation of friendships of some way here. And it seems like that's what they're doing right now. Anyway, and then from there, we see that um, Stacy does go to talk to Karen. And Stacy is venting about how this divorce is super hard on her. She's not really wanting to do it. And she also does not want to tell this news to Aunt Bella, but they're getting closer to deliberation, so she is going to have to. And she's, she's struggling with it. And Karen's like, you know, you'll get through it. It'll be fine. So she's, Karen's doing a great job of consoling her, but then she does like mention the other thing that occurred. She's like, well, also, while you're on your way here, it was discussed that the ladies do find you boring. And she's like, wait, what? Why does everyone find me boring? And she's like, what? I think maybe it's because you're not opening up. And I was like, oh! So a lot of these ladies don't know how to use vocabulary properly. Okay. Um, <laughs> that's how I viewed it. I was like, okay. Because um, what happens later on, we find out it, it's not them finding her boring. It's, they don't really, Stacy definitely is closed off. And it's kind of intentional because of what she has going on. So it all kind of ties together, if it makes any sense. But anyway, so then um, Stacy and her confessional cracked me up. She was like, I can't help that Maria Sunshine. Maybe they're just not used to that in this group. But like, that's not my problem. Come to my planet. I was like, girl. <laughs> As she said that, though, I was like, oh, she's not boring at all. <sighs> Stacy, girl, I saw it. Cause I got that kind of twinkle in my eye too. And for those who don't understand why I say the twinkle, I'll, I'll openly admit, I'm a little crazy, okay? I'm a little cray cray. And not in like a psychiatric evaluation thing. I mean like there's a little bit of a craziness to me. I have a little bit of a streak, if you will. And those who kind of have that kind of streak, we have a joy in our eyes, but we also have a little bit of a twinkle in our eye. <laughs> Don't get twisted. We're not the one or two. <laughs> it's that kind of twinkle. And when she did that smile on something at the confessional, I, we saw each other. I saw it. I was like, oh, the Detroit could come out of her any moment. And y'all just ain't seeing it. Sorry about that. Um, oh, I think my lighting was wrong this whole entire time till now. <laughs> okay, my bad. But anyway, next. Um, so um, Mia um, has the ladies all go on like this little mini boat tour on Lake Norman. And um, it's actually really, 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 really cute. Oh, this little small scene also happened where Ashley was talking to like someone on her over the phone. Um, about her working because she's working a lot and um, we find out she's doing drag shows throughout the country like hosting her drag shows throughout the country and she's like doing like her own like one man show type situation similar to what a lot of the housewives are doing particularly the legacy housewives who have enough of a brand for themselves to kind of you know help income coming and that's pretty much all we get from Ashley when it comes to like her own what's going on with her as an individual because we know she's been coasting along for years um and hopefully the newbies continue to put her on task. They kind of do a little bit on this tour. So on this boat tour, they do decide um, it's a cute little boat tour. And um, I didn't know how close Lake Norman was close to Governor's Island. And Governor's Island is like where a lot of the prominent celebrities live, like foot NFL players, um, basketball players, you know, your sports teams and whatnot in the Carolinas. Um, so that's what was mentioned there. Um, and um, besides that, then the ladies are all kind of, and this boat, this boat tour is kind of a cute little boat tour. Um, and honestly, this picture, this, this um, trip isn't too bad. It's not, I, it's, it's definitely live within your means kind of a, of a um, trip, but it, it's, I'm not mad at it. Um, 
So anyway, besides that little tour that they do, they all kind of do kind of go in their respective corners and start talking about things. So this is where the ladies are talking to Mia about what's going on her situation with Ink and um, Gordon whatnot. Again, land confusion, we know that still. And then over on the other side, we have Kiana, Jazzy, and um, Stacy talking. And um, Stacy asks, like, so is there anyone in the group to Kiana? Is anyone in the group that you kind of have any issues with? And Kiana's like, yeah, Ashley and I, we're just kind of, eh. We're not good, we're not bad, but I mean, we're not good, but we're not, you know, it, it's just kind of, things are still a little weird there. And then we know why. And for those who didn't watch last season, um, Ashley's kind of, is actually kind of the reason why um, Kiana has a scar on her forehead. Uh, and it will always be there. And um, she does share like, yeah, so after that GNA incident happened, or, you know, did things get resolved? Are you, did you press charges? She's like, yeah, I am pressing charges. Um, that's currently in litigation, just waiting to hear what's going to happen with that. So she, she's still fighting it. Um, as they were filming at that moment. I don't know whatever happened with that. Maybe we'll find out on the show what happens. But yeah, that's still definitely a legal matter. And so, yeah, she doesn't really see it for Ashley at this moment. Um, <laughs> and then um, Stacy kind of brings up her little thing with Stace, with um, Ashley. She's like, I just feel like she was really messy about how she put my business out there. Um, she doesn't know how sensitive my divorce is for me. Like, for you to just, like, put, oh, I, I just moved on. It's all good. That's, like, not okay. And uh, Ashley then chimes in. She's like, I did not say it like that. I just said you had a new friend. I didn't know that was a secret. And Ashley, again, not mind the business that pays her. It's like, girl, you are wrong. You shouldn't have chimed in. It's not your business to tell or story to tell. So they do all, all the ladies end up gathering together in the boat because there are separate areas of the boat, but now they're all together. And Ashley and, um, Ashley and, um, Stacey, they talk it out. Stacey, you know, apologizes for how she reacted. She's like, look, I'm sorry I reacted to you in the way I reacted, but like, I am having a tough time going, getting through this divorce. Like, it's not really something I wanted. And I think that's the part that they're not understanding because I think Ashley, she wants a divorce for obvious reasons. Giselle, when she was done, she was done. But like, that's not the phase of divorce that Stacy's at. So something's telling me her husband was the one who asked for the divorce and not her. That's what I'm getting from this. She's never directly said it, but it feels like that's what happened. And so if you're on the side of the one who didn't want the divorce, you're not going to be okay with any of it. You know, it's going to be a tough time. And also too, I'm glad Ashley, I'm glad Stacey had enough discernment to not tell her anything, but she was like, you know, or tell Russell this other than Karen, but like her daughter doesn't know yet. So she really just wants it to not get out yet until her daughter knows. And which makes sense because I'm like, girl. And so her talking about it. So I think in Stacey's eyes, the way Ashley just talked about it so flippantly, like it was her business. She's like, shit, I talked, I told the wrong person, which she did. Um, but she didn't know that. And then Ashley's like, but why would you just assume I'm going to do something messy? Like, you don't even really know me. That's what say that was what Ashley said in response. And she's like, well, I actually have spent some time with you, and then you actually did put your bunion toe feet on my counter. So I'm just going by what I have observed from you the past couple days that I've met of you. I was like, clock that T. At the end, though, they did resolve it, and everyone seems to be on one accord. They talked it through together. And it didn't get messy. There was no one sparking flames or anything like that. It was like, you know, Karen chimed in. She's like, look, she's having a tough time with her divorce, you know. And and Ashley, she said something in her confessional. I, I couldn't follow if she was being shady or being nice. It, de it definitely was nice nasty, though. She's like, you know, I met, she's like, I met, um, 
Stacy at the right time. I'm going to give you what you give me. And I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. Because then also the other thing that came out on this conversation was, because Stacy was like, let's put it all on the floor. Who called me boring? <laughs> and they weren't chiming in yet. Um, Giselle did say, hey, I do find you a little stiff. And then um, Mia was like, it was me. It was me. I said it. And she was like, kind of speaking, kind of saying the same thing. And Karen, and then this is where Karen chimed in even more. She's like, yeah, I think the divorce is making her a little stiff. Like, it, she is having a tough time trying to open up. Um, because also, too, the TJ thing came up. Um, the guy she's, like, kind of seeing. And she just feels like she hasn't been able to see him yet. She, she can't see him the way she wants to see him because of the fact that this divorce is ongoing. Um, and things are not settled yet. And probably, it's probably smart to not do that. Not everyone's you, Mia. <laughs> not everyone is you. And so Mia, in her confession, is like, she can't be celibate this whole entire time. I don't believe it. And Ashley's shading the heck out of this relationship. And I hate to say this, I kind of agree with Ashley. Because for those who, if you didn't watch my last week's review, or if you didn't watch last week's episode, I don't see any romantic sparks when it comes to them. It seems like definitely friends vibes and a distraction. And she probably needs that kind of distraction. I guess if it was me, I probably would go for a distraction where I'm at least, this is happening a little bit, um, for a little bit. And then after that, then I'll go into working on myself and all that. Like, kind of what I'm doing right now. <laughs> but anyway, that's where it ends. It, like with the conversation, everyone seems to be on the same page. Everyone seems to be good. And what I will say is this season so far has been especially refreshing because it seems like issues get resolved. They're not holding on to grudges. They're not holding on to things. And so far, nothing is too serious. So the way y'all have turned things around so far with Potomac, I'm loving it. I will say this, though. I do still miss um, Candace. I know some of y'all don't miss her, but I do. Because I would love, I would have loved for Candace to be part of this turning around of things. And I think she probably could have been. I think the only reason why things didn't get turned around was Robin. I think Robin was the one who was the cog. I think she was. I don't think Candace would have been that if she had, the, if she would have came back. But also too, I get why Candace didn't come back because she wanted to have a healthy pregnancy without, without the stressors. And um, I think she would have been able to though. That's the thing about it. But I think the show just became too much and Giselle's toxic behavior became too much. But at this rate, we're seeing that Giselle isn't doing that so much anymore. And I'm wondering if the whole time, was it Giselle all the way? Or was it Giselle, was it the combination of Giselle and Robin? They're like toxic twins together. But then apart, the they're not so bad. Makes you wonder. But anyway, so then later on that evening... Um, the ladies are out to dinner um, out on the porch and this beautiful arrangement. And then there's a whole bunch of names of these drinks that uh, Mia called them and it was cute. And um, Mia's friends do end up showing up. Um, one of them was already there at the beginning. But then Giselle, because she had to leave soon, because we, you know, from what I said earlier, Giselle takes this opportunity now to like, hey, let's talk to Karen. And she's like, Karen, I am very disappointed in how you decided to do things when you did things. And um, Karen actually does apologize, actually. She apologizes. And because you could actually see in this conversation, Giselle was genuinely hurt. That really hurt her feelings. Like, it wasn't no fake show stuff. It actually hurt her feelings that she would do that. Because even although Karen and Giselle may not be the best of friends... They've known each other for years before this show. I think in Giselle's mind, there always was a form of respect. And she felt like at this moment, she like when that happened with the dual events, that was like the most dis that was pretty disrespectful um, for Karen to do. 
And it was. It was actually, it was something actually out of Giselle's book. It's something that Giselle would actually do. Um, I feel like in the past she would have done that. But I don't think she even would have went that low. Um, cause that was kind of low, low, what, what Karen did a little bit. Um, but Giselle's done a lot of low things on the show too. So, I mean, <laughs> um, look at me being on, being on the fence. Um, <laughs> I'm not, and not on you, Karen, because I know you think you're the fence, but no, you're not. Um, we know you're not. So anyway, um, yeah, so... They do talk it out. They seem to resolve it. And Giselle and professional states like, I don't want to stay mad at Karen. I want to move forward. But I just need Karen to show how great of a friend she is to me. Because I've been there for her throughout the years. And I want that in return. And I believe that. I think they really have been there for each other behind the scenes. Um, when it comes to certain things and situations. Because again, they've known each other for a very long time. Prior to the show. So anyway. Um... <clears throat> From there, um, Giselle's like, hey, okay, I said what I said. I got to go now. <laughs> I'll see y'all tomorrow morning or afternoon. And so she leaves. And then um, the rest of the ladies, Mia's friends show up. And Mia's, and so as, as they're sitting there, Mia's like, hey, I want you all to introduce yourselves to the, to the group um, and say something kind of a funny story about me. And, um, so they start doing that, but then as this is happening, Jacqueline feels the need to overly chime in when it comes to everything. And again, it's giving weirdo energy. Why are you doing that? It, it's weird. It's very weird. And so they're just like, that is weird. I don't understand why she's doing that. I was like, I don't either. <laughs> We're all just like, what is this? Why is this? And so that happens. And then afterwards, then um, at the very end, it was mentioned that one of Mia's friends, Mia and Karen went out on the town off season just for fun. And they had them a good old time. And Karen also shades Jacqueline. She's like, yeah, I can see how like these friends would not be Jacqueline's friends. And I don't know what that means yet. I think we're going to find out. But it definitely seems like... I don't know if maybe, like, Jacqueline is... I don't know. I'm still trying to figure out what this is about. But I think we're going to find out more. But then at the very end, Jacqueline... Um, not Jacqueline, but, like, Mia and that friend stays like, Yeah, after we left you, you accidentally butt dialed us. And, man, we heard some things. They're like, What did you hear? Everyone's like, ooh, ooh, what, what was that? Um, and at the very end, they're like, yeah, we heard you, you Karen, say like, they think I'm going back home with Ray and heard another man over, over the line. I was like, and then it ends as a to be continued. Baby. <laughs> you think this whole entire season, we thought this was about to be about Karen's DUI. They're going to try to get at Karen when it comes to all different things and not just the DUI, apparently. This is the, I think this is the, the um, season of exposing Karen. Because <laughs> when I heard that, I was like, oh. I really, really, really just wish, though, because in all seriousness, when it comes to that situation, that's been a rumor throughout the streets of Potomac for, like, well, the whole, the whole entire time. Why can't Karen just admit that Ray and her have an arrangement? She still could be a grand dame and have an arrangement. I feel like that's actually very grand dame of her to have an arrangement. And just like, you know, it is what it is. Because I mean, we, you could kind of tell, or I guess for me, I kind of figured they're, they have, they're probably not intimate anymore because of Ray, because Ray is much older. He's an older man. And Karen's in her tri triple twenties era, but like Karen looks good, and Karen has a very youthful energy about her, and always has. So like, it's okay for y'all to have an arrangement. Sometimes marriages can be just a contract. It's fine. 
this is 2024. I'm sorry. Like, I'm just about to keep it real. Not you, not all marriages are created equal. Not all marriages are the same. Me personally, if I'm going to get married, I wouldn't want that for me. But like, I'm not going to judge other people on how they, how they carry themselves behind closed doors. So if you put it out there so no one else can put it out there for you, it's probably much easier. But at the same time though, I mean, I think that is part of Karen's like thing that if that's not being talked about, then what are we talking about? <laughs> so in a weird way, this, be, this being talked about is actually, again, still a deflection, but it's deflection in Karen's favor. So is it, I guess, right? <laughs> but we're going to see what happens after that to be continued next episode. But like I said, Real Housewives of Potomac, they're doing some great things. Hopefully um, you're enjoying it so far because I am. But anyway, please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Mel Nostalgic Runner. And I will see you next time. Bye.